Hello and welcome to Anglesey Circuit, where the 2015 Tequila Civic Cup reaches its halfway point with round seven and eight of the championship. Carl Swift and David Bukey lead the two litre and 1.6 classes respectively coming into the weekend. Just before qualifying, I was in the assembly area to speak to two of the drivers. Steve Laidlaw with me from the Civic Cup. Steve, you raced stock hats before. What made you decide to come and race the Civics instead? Just natural progression. Last year was the first year I'd ever done any kind of racing. Uh, really enjoyed it. A couple of my friends come over to the Civics in the off season. Uh, thought I'd join them. Okay, and how have you found the transition to the Civics? Um, Okay, uh, the, the calibre of driver is very, very high. I mean, there are 20, 20 plus guys in a, a grid that are capable of winning races in lots of different series. Uh, so, yeah, it's nice to be able to pick your wits against the best. And how's the season gone for you so far? Uh, getting better. Started a little bit weak. Um, and then uh, Croft, I managed to get two top ten finishes. Uh, six is my highest so far in the Civic, so uh, hoping for better this weekend. Yeah, so Angles, is it a circuit that you've raced at before? Never. Uh, first time I touched tied to time, it was Friday morning. And how did you find it? Scary. <laughs> There's quite a lot to learn, isn't there, isn't there here? Yeah, I think the track's all about keeping momentum and not overdriving. I think it's very easy to be other enthusiastic going into a corner and, uh, and ruin your exit line. So what's the hope today? More top 10 finishes? First. Tim Evans is with me. Tim, you've raced a, in a number of different club racing championships. Uh, tell us how you've come to race in the Civic Cup. Well, actually, I was uh, doing a saloon's car race with a couple of pals of mine, and somebody said, do you want to you try Civic Cup? One make series. Very good. So I thought, I'll have a look at it, and I, I was sold straight away. Very, very good. Good guys. Good close racing. Re relatively cheap. Relatively cheap, as I'll as all say. But yeah, no, good, good. Now we've got really good grids, so I think it's going to go quite a long way, Civic Cup. Yeah. You're racing in the 1600 class, of course. How do you find that, racing up against the, the two-litre guys? Yeah, yeah, I mean, now we've, we've split the grids now, so the two-litres are obviously a little bit quicker now, so we're sort of, if a class wins over the line about ninth and tenth, eighth, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's how it is. Uh, in the championship, we're, I think I'm third now, so we did, at Croft, we got a first and a third, so we're getting there with it, yeah. yeah. So who are your biggest rivals within uh, Class A, then? I think the biggest rivals are Mark Anderson, Rich, he's, he's obviously uh, a quick boy, um, David Book is leading it, uh, so it's all very, very close. Um, uh, Huffy, Huffy's good, Huffy's there, we're all, we're all amongst it, it's good, really good close. And there's still, what, another four meetings including this one to go, so it's a lot to play for. Yeah, yeah, there's only a, a number of a single figure points in the top three or four of us, so it could be anybody's, watch this space. Well, this is how the grid lines up for the first of two races today. Mark Higginson and Bernard Garlia on the front row. Carl Swift and Adam Shepard on row two. The best of the Class A cars is Andrew Huff in sixth overall, ahead of Mark Anderson and Matthew Bolton. Cars on the grid then. It is the red car of Higginson on pole. It's the silver car of Garlia alongside him on the front row of the grid. As we wait for the lights to go out, a little bit of creeping there, I think, from Garlia from the outside of the front row, but they go now and head down towards target for the first time. This big grid, 28 cars we have starting this race. It's Mark Anderson that we go on board with, car number 12. He started on the outside of row 5 of the grid alongside Stu Neal, who's just ahead of us on the left-hand side there. We're on board with Stu Neal now, so he started ninth. He's on the outside line going around the banking, and it looks like he's lost out to Anderson there. Those two are in different classes, of course, though. But Anderson has, crucially, got it with Andrew Huff in the turquoise-coloured 1.6-litre car. You can see them making their way through church. And up front, Mark Higginson has lost the lead. It's Garlia that's gone through. Higginson trying to fend off Adam Shepard, the Essex driver, for second position, and he has done so as they go up towards Rocket, the left-hander, for the first time. It's Garlia with a clear lead of about three car lengths over the rest but it did look as if that start was a little bit dubious to me, so we'll see what the officials make about that one. So down towards Peel we go. We're on board once more with Stu Neal. There you can see the turquoise car of Andrew Huff. It looks like he is trying to make up a place as well on the number six car of Rob Baker, one of the two-litre cars. That would be for sixth position overall, I think. 
but at the end of lap one it is Garley that's leading Higginson with a bit of wheel trim hanging off is in second place gap back to Adam Shepard in third in fourth place is the number 45 car of Carl Swift who is the championship leader coming into this weekend he qualified third on the grid and there you can see the battle for Class A honours and it's Mark Anderson having a look up the inside of Andrew Huff as they make their way around the banking off the corner now they're side by side and Anderson here is going to have the inside line for Church Corner can he go through to take the lead of the class yes he can so Mark Anderson goes through to take the lead away from Andrew Huff there Anderson having already had three class wins during the course of this season at Donington Park and at Croft but Grand Sachin between was a meeting to forget for him he's second in the points behind David Buki, who's not won Class A in a race so far this season but he has been consistent and therefore he's at the top of the standings so round rocket they go and a challenge on here Adam Shepard has his work cut out to try and keep Carl Swift at bay these two of the drivers that have done quite a lot of the podium finishing bef between them so far this season Swift has been uh, on the podium on four out of the six occasions so far Shepard has made it there five times so far and they are the top two in the Class B standings, the two litre class standings separated by uh, 11 points coming into this weekend. Up front it looks to me as if Higginson is catching Garlier though as we look now at this battle for fifth and sixth. That's between Endaf Owens and Rob Baker who goes up on the inside and takes fifth place away. So Rob Baker who did a lot of the winning in the Civic Cup last season not really showing that kind of form this year. He makes the place there, though. Looks like it might have changed round up ahead, though. We're watching from uh, Mark Anderson's car, and I think Baker's possibly lost out once again to the former Mini Media champion, Endaf Owens. And for the lead of the race, it's Higginson with Galia. Higginson in the most modern of the type of cars that we've got racing in the Civic Cup this season. Galia, who had a win here last season. So we'll be looking to repeat that feat, no doubt. Hickinson yet to have a win in the Civic Cup. Looks like we've still got all 28 cars circulating. On to lap four of the race then, and it's still only a car length between Garlia and Higginson. They've pulled out quite a good gap over the rest of the field, and now Higginson dives out of the slipstream, and he gets halfway alongside Bernard Garlia as they go through the right-hand kink at school, and indeed he's all the way through. Garlia trying to fight back, going to the outside line for Rocket, but it looks like Higginson has got that move done. On lap four, Mark Higginson takes the lead of the race. Well, it's already been a successful weekend for the Higginson family because older brother Matt had a win in the RGB Class F Championship race yesterday here at Anglesey. Can we have wins for different brothers during the course of the weekend? Through the Corks group, Garley is not giving up on this, I'm sure. Higginson it is that's out front for the moment. On to the short front stretch they go then through turn one known as target it looked like Rob Baker might have uh, exited the fray there here's the battle for third position though and back indeed to the battle for the lead because Garley has not given up on trying to find a way through past Mark Higginson and locking up there that's Steve Laidlaw Number two, Steve Laidlaw, the former stock catch racer, who we heard from before the start of the race. Well, once again, we've put the curse on him. He's lost a good few places there. So here is Stu Neal, winning at the lower reaches of the top ten. Making that climb up the hill as a bit further up the order, it's or a bit further back down the order, I should say. Side by side there, involving the number 16 car of Matthew Bolton and also number 18, Sam Hathaway. The former Mighty Mini Race, in fact, this is just ahead of them, isn't it? It's for 8th and ninth positions. And yes, just behind them, in fact, is that number 4 car of Stu Neal, Rodron Vella. It is behind uh, behind him. So one of the Class A cars there for Bolton, the all-red car. It's the red and white car for Sam Hathaway. And they're queuing up behind these two, in actual fact, now. Stu Neal is just the first of those in car number 4, the 35-year-old facility engineer from Salisbury. We're back on board with him now in his EP3. He brought a 
sort out at the end of last season. So it's a Rotax Max Karting, the uh, Forest Edge circuit in Hampshire in the past. Enjoying now his racing in the Tegiwa Civic Cup. Necessarily enjoying the fact that Roger Vella has got up ahead of him though. Towards Church, one, two, three, four, five, six, really eight cars in this train. There you have the number 21 car, which is Daniel Webster, the all blue car. Well, Higginson is still managing to hold on to that bit of flapping wheel uh, arch trim, isn't he? But he's holding on to the lead of the race as well, and he's pulled out a little bit of a gap now over Bernard Garlier. It doesn't look as if Bernard Garlier is going to repeat his victory from Anglesey last season, at least in this race, because Higginson looks to have this one firmly under control through this uh, back section of the circuit, the long sweeping right-hander at school and up to Rocket. And the fastest lap of the race has just gone to Mark Anderson. 1 minute 22.06, but Mark Higginson, the leader of the race, pretty much a second faster. 121.07, that equates to almost 69 miles an hour. And that is a uh, quite an impressive average when you consider how tight and twisty this circuit is. Here, though, is Higginson making his way through the corkscrew for the final time. And it looks like he's going to cling on for his first win in the Tegiwa Civic Cup. It's round seven of the championship. And it's a first win of the year for Mark Higginson as the chequered flag goes out. Garlier goes across the line in second, but we do need to think whether we might have a penalty or not. And here are the drivers in Class A, and it is going to be Mark Anderson that holds on from Andrew Huff, but there's not been much to choose between them for the whole race. Mark, first win in the Civic Cup, you must be really happy with that. Yeah, really chuffed with that. It's been a long time coming. Getting a couple of podiums last year, but managed to get the win this year. Really happy with it. Tell us about how that race went from your point of view. Yeah, well, starting from the inside is really tricky because the outside line always seems to get to the, to the herping first, so I obviously lost that place. Kept with Bernard and managed to overtake him down the, down, down the back straight. But yeah, it was a hard race, he pushed me all the way, but really happy with it. Okay. Bernard, second place on the road, certainly. I think we need to see about what might happen with a, a, a penalty there for a bit of a, an ambitious start, maybe? Yeah, they were just telling me I had a jump start that I might have a penalty about it. <laughs> yeah. Did you think uh, maybe if there was a little bit of creeping there off the line? Um, yeah, just the red light was a little bit longer than I do, and I have no handbrake to hold the car there, so <laughs> okay. nothing can be done about right. it. And so obviously Mark got past you anyway, but you were able to stay quite close to him. Yeah, I managed to hold him behind me for the first three laps, I think. Mm -hmm. um, then he got, got past me and we kept the same gap throughout the whole race then. And are you hoping for a better result in race two? Obviously, you'll be uh, a little bit further back on the grid. Yeah, I need to see from where I'm going to start now, but hoping to make up places from there. Adam, third place there, but it wasn't an easy, easy race at all because Carl was with you the whole time. Yeah, it was fun. Um, me and Carl are similarly matched for pace over a lap, but he is so much faster than me on up the top of the hill. Yeah. I just can't get it turned in. But I'm really f a lot quicker than him through the... The, the court screwing on to the start finish straight, so it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, tough race, but yeah, it was good fun. Having had that experience of being in, you know, quick and slow in different places to Carl, do you think you'll change anything on the car for the second race? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know what yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, if we can get the pace that Carl's got through this, the long section, mm -hmm. um, but he's saying the same about us for the top part, yeah, yeah. so it's difficult. But. Obviously, Croft was a bit of a meeting yeah. to forget him anyways for you. There's lots of hard work there. Yeah. Has it been a smoother weekend here at Anglesey? Yeah, it has. Um, touch with the cars held together. So um, <laughs> that's all we're going to ask for that side of it and it's down to him to do the rest. Here are the results then. Class A, first of all, it was Mark Anderson holding on from Andrew Huff and Matthew Bolton with the points leader, David Pukey, with a solid finish in fourth. And as far as Class B is concerned, confirmation of the win for Mark Higginson. He got the fastest lap as well. Adam Shepard second, Cars with third. Garlier fourth in the end with that penalty. Owens and Vela completing the top six.
top ten in the finishing order for race one. Set the grid for race two. So it's Steve Laidlaw and Roger Novella on the front row, but we're missing Adam Shepard from ninth on the grid. Some kind of brake problems, I believe, and his car is being worked on in the pits as the race gets underway. And who's made the best of the starts then? It looks like it's Laidlaw from pole position. Vela holding on to second place, but Matthew Bolton there in his red Class A car that started third going around the outside of uh, Vela. One or two cars getting it wrong in the background. Someone going off onto the grass there. Hopefully they won't reach the barriers and they'll be able to recover. Someone else a bit sideways in the back of shot as well, but it's Laidlaw that leads through Church for the first time. Bolton it is in second place. Vela is third, and then it's two more Class A cars that are level pegging for fourth and fifth. That's Mark Anderson and Andrew Huff. But of course you've got some of the quick guys, the likes of Higginson and Swift and Garley are trying to fight their way through. Up to Rocket for the first time. We're on board with uh, Stu Neal, who in the end finished race one in 14th. So started this race from the seventh row of the grid. Bit of work to do for him then. That's Garlia being left to run a bit wide uh, through that part of uh, the exit of Rocket through Peel. They now come. Garlia having lost a place there, and the uh, quick guys not necessarily finding it easy to uh, find their way back through up the order. Often we find that the uh, guys that started 8th or 9th or 10th position can fight their way through to the front of the order relatively quickly, but maybe that's not going to be the case at Anglesey. It's quite a tight and twisty circuit. Over the line to complete lap number one then. It is Steve Laidlaw leading in. Second place is number 16, Matthew Bolton. In third place, it's the 34 car of Andrew Huff, but that changes at the banking because through goes Bolton on the inside. And it's a bit of a pincer movement on Steve Laidlaw there because Andrew Huff tried to go around the outside of him as well. And has that worked? Well, he's still sitting there on the outside. I don't think he quite has, but it's now Bolton in the Class A car, unusually, that is in the lead of the race. Laidlaw trying to fight back, and of course the two litre cars are that bit more powerful, so while the 1.6 litre class cars are pretty good through the corners, there's plenty of those here at Anglesey, on this back stretch you expect the two litre cars to come to the fore, and that's exactly what's happened, because the Class A cars, oh, which have made a bit of contact there between uh, Huff and Bolton, have dropped back down to about fourth and fifth positions, with Rodron Vela on that back stretch taking the lead of the race. So we have not one, but two Maltese drivers in the Tequila Civic Cup this season. Bernard Galia we saw uh, finishing on the podium on the road in race one, and now it's Rodron Vela who finished that first race in ninth position, leading the way in race number two. So down through the corkscrew they go once more, and they are about to complete lap number two of this race. There's Bolton making his way over the line, just ahead of Huff, but it's Vela from Laidlaw this time as they make their way towards the banking and the third place car looks to be number 20 Endaf Owens, yes it is the Welsh driver from South Wales but sort of on home territory this weekend down towards Church they come, this pack still pretty tightly bunched after just a couple of laps of racing Carl Swift going through there, he's uh, got a bit of work to do because he started this race on row four of the grid and he's not really made any progress so far either. Up towards the left-hander at Rocket, still Vela leading, Owens now to second, Laidlaw down to third, then you've got the two Class A cars, Bolton and Huff, Huff who finished second in class in the earlier race. Lap seven now. There's Carl Swift making his way through and he is still down in eighth position. So Carl Swift, the championship leader coming into this weekend, hasn't really been able to make any progress and he's not really in this lead group which still comprises uh, even as we go into the second half of this race of seven cars. The challenge is on though for Rodrin Vela and Endaf Owens locks up and that allows Matthew Bolton back through on the inside or does it? No, because Owens fends him off. Bolton stays third and then the next car through is still that of Steve Laidlaw so he is clinging on as well. It's good to see that the likes of uh, Vela and Laidlaw who started on the front row are still in this lead group because as we say sometimes it's the quick guys that come back through guys that started on the front get dumped back down to the lower reaches of the top ten. 
good to see some different names fighting for podium positions here. It shows what an open and competitive championship this Tsukiwa Civic Cup is this season. I've got absolutely no idea who's going to take the title at the end of it. So it's six more races to go uh, after this. At Silverstone at Snetterton and at Donington to round off the year. Around the banking they go once more. We'll have just four more laps to go, I think, including the one that they're on. It's going to be an 11 lap race. And the 13 minutes plus one lap that we're allowed. On board once more with Stu Neal, who is uh, in 10th position at the moment. Up ahead of him is the number 21 car of Daniel Webster. The top two here now pulling away a little bit, though. And uh, Owens once again challenging for the lead. Now just up ahead of them there, you can see the car of Adam Shepard who has got back out of the pit lane, but he's several laps down, not really a contender for the race. Best that he can hope for maybe is uh, to pick up the fastest lap or something like that, but he'll be so frustrated, uh, especially having done such a good job to get onto the podium in race one, the 22-year-old from Essex. It is Rodrin Vela that continues to lead, the 25-year-old from Malta in his EP3. Like Garley, he's done some time attack type events in Sicily in the past, the nearest uh, motorsport to home really for him in Malta. He also done some BMX competition in his youth as well. Fastest lap in Class A has gone to Matthew Bolton, a woman at 22.64. And in Class B, yes, it has gone to Adam Shepard, a 121.69, but that's not nearly as quick actually, it's about six tenths slower than Higginson went in the first race. And Higginson, by the way, that uh, has pulled into the pit, so Higginson is out of the race. Leaders, though, on to their final lap. And it looks like Vela uh, is going to be a Maltese winner on Anglesey, just as uh, Bernard Garlia was last season. Through the final couple of corners, he just needs to negotiate these. Owens has made it through to second, ahead of uh, Laidlaw, with Bolton having dropped but back down the order a little bit. And the fourth car in the train is the 91 car of Garlia as well but towards the line he goes and Rodrin Vela is going to take his first victory in the Tiguar Civic Cup round eight of the championship is won by Vela from Owens and Laidlaw there are other podium finishers still more cars to come through uh, down the order as well Oliver Withington I can see in that number 39 car he goes over the line as well that's one of the FN2s And we'll hear from our top three. Rodin, well done. Congratulations on your first win in the Civic Cup. Yes, it was a tough race. Pressure from behind mm -hmm. throughout the race. It was a long race, mm -hmm. but we got there in the end. Did you think that you would be able to do it? You know, you started on the front row, but you got some very quick drivers behind you. Well, I knew it was a bit tough, but on Friday I knew I had the pace, so it was my time to mm -hmm. prove it today. Yeah. End up second place there, but I think all of the top three, you all came home with big smiles there. Yeah, it was mega. Um, Started six, I think, on the grid. Mm -hmm. Had a good first lap, um, stuck at it, and then the 1600s are really quick round here, so we had a few laps to get past them. Had a good battle with Matty, and then uh, had a few good uh, rubbing racing with uh, Steve, <laughs> teammates, so it was awesome. Good laugh. Steve, well done, must be delighted to get a podium finish. Yeah, fantastic. First uh, piece of silverware due to first, second, or third, so fantastic, yeah. Absolutely, and it was uh, quite an intense race as well, wasn't it? I'd, I've never had to set my own pace on the first lap before, so that was a bit of a challenge, but other than that, yeah, great. And fantastic to be racing with NF for, uh, for positioning a, a teammate of mine. So. It was quite interesting as well, because often we have these sort of reverse good races and the people that start towards the front sort of drop back down the order, but in that race, yourself and Rodden were on the front row and both finishing up on the podium. Yeah, fantastic for both myself and for Rodren. Uh, I know we're, we've both been hankering after some silverware this year. There are the Class A results, and Matthew Bolton uh, excluded for an infringement. So Andrew Huff promoted to the class win from Tim Evans and Netanel Azar. In Class B, Rodren Vela took the win from Endalf Owens and Steve Laidlaw. Garlia, Swift and Webster completed the top six. And this is the effect all of that has on the championship. It's still David Bukey to the fore in Class A, Huff and Evans second and third, while Swift hangs on in Class B from Shepard and Garlia. Well, that's just about all we've got time for from Anglesey Circuit. Do join us again in a few weeks' time when we'll be on the international circuit at Silverstone. But for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>